頑張れば夢は叶うなんて言うけど必死に頑張った。Oh, hey, look! All the villains in one scene. Well, it only took us like、oh, 41 episodes to get here. Record time. We open this week very timely with everyone enjoying a seasonal banquet. Granted, it didn't involve any turkey, as only North America had been invaded by extremist separatists, but it did have all of the foods listed in that one manga chapter of Tropical Roots Precure. And also, like that chapter, each of the cures wanted to celebrate the season in their own unique ways. Princess, mo, isho ni yomi masho? Yeah, honestly, let's just pretend like last week didn't happen. In Masho's case, she wanted to take a second chance at Comic Market, I mean, that one picture book contest, and even wanted to try and go for first place this time, rather than a cheap honorable mention. Thus, she got right to work after they were finished eating. And why don't I have one? Aren't I the Goku XP of this team? This led to probably my favorite bit of this episode Masho brainstorming whilst recreating the opening to Tier Moon Empire. Yeah, major praise to this episode's director and storyboarder Hideki Hiroshima and Chiaki Kon, respectively, for making a mental breakdown as hilarious as all hell. <laughs> Oh, come on, Masho. Something like that would never happen. Oh my god, we're all gonna die! Masho's waifu tried to relax her, but even her super strength couldn't break through the writer's block. Thus, they decided to literally drag her out of the house to get her some fresh air to relax. Meanwhile, Monda had gotten a new job at a hot dog truck. Um, I'm pretty sure that's a different Yu Gi Oh! protagonist gimmick. Not to mention, he didn't exactly have the patience for it, even though his boss was really damn nice. Well, that is true. You were the most effective villain in this show so far. I mean, you didn't exactly stick the landing, but great wits do. Also, I guess people just weren't questioning why there was an obese anthropomorphic pig walking around town. But yeah, realizing that even the flatulent swine was doing better than him, Monda decided that he needed to start doing some actual villain stuff again before he truly became useless, which, given how many episodes are left in this show, yeah, that is a legit concern. With that, the precure soon arrived in the park. <laughs> Well, we've been barely able to use these clips anyway. Just f already! Having been able to unwind thanks to her friends and the autumn leaves, Mashiro was able to start sketching out ideas for her contest book. Seeing his old adversary, Monda tried to crush her dreams again, and not too surprisingly, it failed again, though at least for new and interesting reasons. He basically told the deuterogonist of the show about how only the best of the best tend to rise to the top, which he was able to experience firsthand as a dropout in the Empire who was always at the bottom of the food chain. Though again, I feel like I have to point out that he was far and away the most effective baddie in this whole damn show, and even matched the blue screen Sora for a couple of episodes. And sure, that cue ball is also going to do it by the end of this episode, but it's going to be for much more contrived reasons, so give yourself a little credit, dude. And Mashiro seemed to agree, as she unknowingly turned his attempt at a psychological attack right back on him. This led to a great exchange between the two, where they used the autumn leaves as allegories for Monta's fall from grace. Okay, I think I get what you're saying. We just have to kill this guy, and then these trees will have all the new treats they'll ever need. Nah, of course, she was going with a classic glasses half full example of optimism to try and cheer him up, which ironically had the opposite effect since he wanted to try and drag her down and instead got completely psychoanalyzed. Honestly, this is just a great scene showing Monda's very conflicting emotions in that while he did primarily have ill intentions, maybe he also wanted to unload his own baggage. Unfortunately, though, he wasn't going to get the same kind of reprieve from Buzz Killington here. 
なぜまだノーノーと生きている単位を取るだけの最低出席出席してもいつも居眠り試験は赤点ギリギリ I know I know we keep referencing that one Yu-Gi-Oh episode but come on was like one of the best duels of that show Hell Skearhead was also trying to kill the character voiced by Ken because he was supposedly a failure but let's be real here he was just trying to take out the competition who has at least one more W than he does Of course, Masho came in with what should have been a Piccolo save, like, come on, dude, you have a free shot on one of your mortal enemies. But no, instead, he just made a kill Borg with the hot dog truck that was a good distance away from all of them and also gave Monda an opening to escape. I'll tell you the truth. I'm a little confused by your tactics. Uh, yeah, is this guy really supposed to be the big bad strategist of the Empire? Anyway, the fight of this week was... Pretty solid, certainly not a Sakuga Fest like the corresponding Ultima Cure this week, but the evil food cart did have an interesting fighting style based around using a Paracel for both offense and especially defense. And being the spotlight cure of this episode, Mashiro did come up with a good strategy to neutralize the monster's main weapon by essentially playing volleyball with one of her attacks. And after defeating Ironhide, Skearhead switched his focus back onto Monda, forcing Sora to run the fence while asking why he was barely trying to fight on behalf of the Empire. I Hello? Hello? Hmm, I think someone was trying to call me. Eh? Eh? More on that and the next episode preview in just a bit, but yeah, while Sora was going to be sulking for about the next week or so, the episode ended on a pretty strong note with Monda reflecting on what Mashu had told him. This was one of the better episodes of at least the final quarter of this series. Yes, I know that sounds like low praise, but I do mean it as it was both a pretty funny episode as well as a good and emotional resolution to the GOAT of the Undargo Empire, Batamonda. And depending on what happens next week, this also might end up becoming one of the most important episodes of the season. So yeah, bonus points if a certain twist does happen that I've been predicting. Considering the writer of this episode was Yoshimi Narita, I'm honestly kind of surprised she didn't push for more of a ship between the toxic older guy and the teenage girl. Not complaining in the slightest, mind you, as I did end up really liking the friendship between Monda and Mashiro. The two were able to bond over their surprising similarities, that being how theoretically they were the weakest members of their respective teams, though in practice as we've seen, they're actually the MVPs and just need a little more confidence in themselves. Just because they didn't have any outstanding quirks like everyone else, they were more than capable of pulling a Deku and working their way to the top. It's just kind of ironic that one of them did almost traumatize the other's girlfriend, but all's fair in love and war, right? And again, totally platonic here, thank god. As a result, their talk in this episode was particularly strong and did have a good message about how truly great efforts aren't just totally forgotten and lost so long as we make the most of our time on this planet, which, wait, is that gonna be like the final message of Ultima? Well, whatever, good stuff that did bring Monda's story to a satisfying conclusion, which just leaves us with this stick in the mud. Though at least there was an interesting development here with him mentioning a loved one, which was likely the Kaiserin, and next week Captain Shala was coming to Sorashido, and the episode preview cut between her and Skearhead at the end. Hmm, I wonder. I mean, really at this point, they kind of have to pull that twist to at least somewhat justify the Big Bad's almost complete absence from the show. We'll just have to wait and see, but for now, this was overall a good episode. It had great comedy thanks to Macho going full meltdown with her writing, and drama with Monda's arc concluding very nicely. The autumn leaves may be falling, but at least one character was uplifted by the end of this. And as always, we hope you all are having a nice weekend before you have to get back to the grindy stone on Monday. Fortunately for us here in the stakes, Thanksgiving is coming up, meaning that we'll get a few extra days off, plus a ton of food to pick out on. This is also usually the time of the year when stuff about the next Precure series starts rolling out, and if anything comes up, nah, no, we'll make a short or something. We'll see if, how busy we are at the time. And until next time, though, farewell for now, my friends, and if you'll excuse me, I'm in charge of the turkey this year. That is, I'm just gonna carve it up this year. What were you thinking?